Welcome to the Horry County Schools Teacher Vlog Series. In this series, we will be spotlighting the work of some of our amazing teachers, and they will be sharing and reflecting on various lessons, tech tools, and teaching strategies. Join us for a peek into their classrooms. Hi there, and welcome to my video, Teaching is a Work of Heart. One of my passions is teaching math. I absolutely love teaching every math lesson to my students and making them as interactive as possible. And today, I hope to show you that in a lesson from Everyday Math 4, and it's lesson 5.3, Place Value Application, Pennies and Dimes. So let's jump right in. So here is my Nearpod lesson for Everyday Math for Lesson 5.3, Place Value Application, Pennies and Dimes. I'm in the preview mode only, just so I can show you in general terms what I did to create this lesson, but you'll still be able to see a lot of what I did to make this lesson for my students. So on the first slide, I always put an objective, and my district has a pacing guide in which we all use to get our I can statements from. This is beneficial for both teacher and students, it keeps us very um, focused on what we're supposed to be doing and also the students know what they're going to be doing during the lesson. I always try to include important vocabulary words. In this case, the word is exchange and this word I've already introduced informally to my students as we first had learned about place value and how whenever they get 10 cubes, they can trade or exchange for a long. So I always try to make sure to say that word a few times before they've ever had it formally. And next is my students' favorite thing. They love time to climb. I actually created this one myself, but I used the problems from the mental math from this lesson from everyday math. And I can show you in a different video exactly how to make the time to climbs, but they are very easy to do. Next, I included an open-ended question for my students. And as you can see, this is what it says. And this is getting the students geared up and ready for whatever we're going to be doing for the lesson. So we're gonna be making coin exchanges, but also relating that back to place value. So I always give my students a few minutes to think of this, talk about it with a partner and record what they think. And next I have a video that I included, and this one has an interactive mode. So everywhere you see a blue dot at the bottom of the screen, it's going to pause there and ask the students some type of interactive question. As you can tell, I can actually toggle this button off when I create the lesson and make it so that they just watch the lesson straight through. This video is about coins and their values. So it actually goes through pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Even though the focus of this lesson is on dimes and pennies, it never hurts to expose students that are ready to just a little bit more. And this was a great video as far as going over coins and their values. Next, I have a teacher slide, and this is basically for my teachers that I team teach with in order for them to not have to carry their book around the classroom. They can actually do these little activities with their students. And so this part of the lesson, the students actually need to get out their own pennies and dimes. And I had my students bring in their own pennies and dimes from home. And then what we did is we associated the penny with the cube, the dime with the long. And we talked about the coins values and they're actually getting to touch the real coins. So it's great experience for the students. We also talk about exchanges on this slide or trades. And so we talk about how we can trade 10 pennies for one dime. And again, just relating that back to place value. This was a fantastic boom card that I found. So after I've talked about pennies and dimes and related them back to tens and ones and place value, the students are able to do this one. And I can actually, when I click on it in class, it'll pull up on my screen and I can actually model for the students pulling over the dimes and then the pennies counting how many tens, how many ones, and then writing that answer in the, or typing the answer in the last box. And so the students get some practice with that. Um, this is not in everyday math, but it's a fantastic way just to kind of bridge that gap and give the students a little more interactive practice right in front of themselves on their screens. 
And then again, we're talking about modeling, exchanging 10 pennies for one dime. You can use everyday math. They have longs and cubes and they have pennies and dimes. But what I found was a fantastic resource. And I'm actually going to go to this web page and show you. This is by the Math Learning Center. And it's actually considered an app, but it will work on your computer and it will also work on student devices. So instead of having the students having to get out of Nearpod and go into everyday math, the students can just stay in this one streamlined lesson. And then as you can see, I'm working with dimes and pennies. And I just make sure to reiterate that with my students that we're working only with dimes and pennies today. And then if you were to tell the students to bring over nine pennies, they can actually bring over nine pennies, which are also on the cubes. And they can even just touch them and it'll bring them over. So as my students and I, we kind of played around with this the day that I used it in class and we learned lots of really cool things about the program. So there's my nine pennies. And then let's say that I asked the students to bring over one dime. And then as you can see, as it brings the dime over, the dime is attached to a long. So the students can very quickly see that connection between dimes and longs and pennies and cubes. And then what I'd even have my students do is um, drag them over and match them up with the long. So then they can also see whenever they get 10 pennies that they need to make an exchange. So as you can tell, it's actually hooking all of my pennies together. So it's really easy, even though I don't have the place value mat, it's still easy for the students to be able to see when they can make exchanges. So if we kept dragging these over, and again, as long as I get them close, it's gonna drag them right over. And I must have pulled 10 by accident, but happy mistake for me, because now you can clearly see that 10 pennies equals a dime or a long. And so we can make an exchange or a trade. So this was a fantastic resource that really enhanced my lesson. You could absolutely, because there's a few lessons later where it gets into the trading the um, dimes, 10 dimes for $1. And you can clearly see the dollars are on the flats as well. There were lots of other really neat tools down here at the bottom if you look. This one has the pennies on each of the place value items. However, if you click this coin, it switches it straight to dollars and dimes and pennies. So once your kids get the hang of exchanging and the base 10 and how it relates, then you can actually have them take away the base 10 blocks and now they only see the money. So it was just a really, really neat resource that we found. It really streamlined my lesson again because the students were not having to get in and out of things. And it was just a fantastic way just to kind of associate dimes with pennies because I didn't have enough dimes and pennies or even longs and cubes to give all of the students many more that they would need in order to count. Each student in my class has about five longs and about 20 cubes, and that's great. But when you get to making the larger exchanges, then they can't do those. So this was a great tool that I found that let every kid interact with as many blocks as we needed to. So then I always close out my lesson. This was a, would you rather have three dimes or 30 pennies and why? And the students, it's a collaborate board, so they can actually type right here. And I've even taught my students how to image search so they can even hunt for images um, using Google and put those in there. They can also, because they're on their iPads, use different emojis. So the students would be able to explain what they liked and why, or what they thought was better and why. And then of course, um, we discussed the answers on the collaborate board, and then we went on to do our journal pages. So this was a fantastic tool that I found that really streamlined my lesson. As you know, we don't have time to lose in our classrooms right now. So this was a fantastic way to not lose any instructional time and to give all students an opportunity to work with dimes and pennies, longs and cubes. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was able to give you some tips and some strategies and maybe some online resources that you can use in math with your students. Thanks so much again for watching, and I hope to see you next time on Teaching is a Work of Art. Thanks for
watching an episode of our Horry County Schools teacher vlog series. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to all of our Dear Dis social media pages.